What up my freaks, Ruana Sensate here with part 2 of my Total War Warhammer 3 modded vampire coast campaign. So as we saw last time, we made it out of Sartosa and, well, I guess made landfall for the first time, taking a couple provinces and then ending the episode off with another sea encounter against some rogue pirates. We're gonna fight this battle mostly because we can and, well, we'll get too badly damaged if we ought to resolve it, but I expect that that will change relatively soon as our army gets more powerful. Before we jump into this battle, two quick things. First of all, there was a hotfix uh, that was applied to the game, I think today, and it apparently destabilized something with regards to the mods or something. I don't know whether everything's fixed. There may be some wonk, um, but it does appear to be working for now, so I think we're still okay, and if I've uploaded this, it will apparently have worked. Uh, the second thing, just like the Lewin campaign and Malekith campaign campaigns before them, we're going to be doing a threshold sort of thing with regards to scheduling, so if this episode gets let's say 400 likes and 50 comments the next episode will be an hour long and i guess next time i'll do another threshold for two episodes on saturday as well so yeah if you're into that sort of thing and uh, don't forget to drop those likes and comments below anyway maggie coughlin we're going to be facing off against you right now Alrighty, here we go again. I'm actually a little bit less afraid of the enemy carronade than I would be of an enemy mortar, so we're pretty much free to just directly move towards the enemy. Now oh, look at this, like a little, uh, like a little flag with the, with the, uh, uh, with the vampire coast thing. Symbol, rather. Is it on all of them? Or is it only on, huh? What the heck? Oh, okay, yeah, it is on. <laughs> For a second, I thought it would disappear, but no, we're okay, we're okay. Hey, good job, Krabby Boys, you do you. Anyway, uh, we are going to move our scurvy doggos around, maybe try to hit that, that uh, carronade, which, in fact, this time around, looks like it wants to target the scurvy dogs, or rather than the rest of our army. Possibly a good choice, possibly a bad choice, I don't know. Perhaps the AI recognizes that this is the only real threat to said uh, unit, but on the other hand, they're not going to stop it. Uh, the other big threat is, of course, the enemy depth guard, and we're going to have both of our units of uh, deck gunners focus them down. We're going to pop that spear fishing net, spear fishers net, from Aranessa on them to lock them down in place while the deck gunners hopefully rip them apart. Alright, the explosions won't do as much damage to them, obviously, because they're in a relatively loose formation and are heavily armored, but they're still taking quite a few hits and are now below half HP. In the meantime, these scurvy dogs have taken care of the enemy unit of uh, Carronade crew. The Krabby Boys are in, and they're getting followed uh, by the rest of our militia. All right, force the enemy to move towards us as we fire into them with our pistols and then get into it in melee as well. We should at least be able to beat deckhands mobs without too much trouble. Still have to remember that the basic Sartosan units are only a tier one unit and until we can replace them with the Sartosan mercenaries, I want to say, is the name of the unit, the boarding crew equivalent unit. Uh, they're going to be very fragile and not much different from a free company militia unit of the Empire. Nonetheless, it should be more than enough to overwhelm the enemy here. As we can see, we've been able to send our Krabby Boys to once again take the brunt of the hits from the enemy. The unit of Depth Guard appears to have been destroyed, and now it's a simple matter of enveloping the enemy army and destroying it from the flanks with our piles of Sartos and infantry, which are doing their thing. Once again, these sandy island maps will make the blood textures go crazy, but once again, and you gotta get used to that one. That's three games later, I just don't think it's gonna get fixed. Anyway, uh, let's see, the enemy army begins to crumble away, in fact only the enemy lord remains alive. Aranus is a little bit hurt. Yeah, we really need to get her her mount as well as some regeneration. Until we do, she's going to be quite fragile. Uh, but afterwards, she'll be a decent fighter. 
She's not the strongest individual lord, but the sheer amount of uh, variety that her roster provides by virtue of having access to the various Sartosan units and Ogre units is very much worth it. And plus, her not being a caster lord means she won't have to split her points up between spell work and between her fighty abilities, so she would actually come online in terms of her, her fighty capabilities a little bit earlier uh, than uh, some of the other vampire ghost lords. In fact, pretty much all the other vampire ghost lords. So, yeah. That ain't too bad. Anyway, that'll what <laughs> waddle? That'll waddle? <laughs> I don't know. I combined two words in some way there. Uh, but either way, the battle's ours is the size of victory, and once again, oh, we stand victorious over the irregular vampire coast, and hopefully we'll get a decent chunk of change for our trouble. Alrighty, not too bad. It looks like we were able to get a lot of mileage out of our deck gunners in particular. 14k and 11k damage on the two, and they were able to knock down the uh, single unit of enemy depth guard with twin axes before they really achieved anything, which was by far the most threatening unit on the enemy team, other than the Carinade, I guess, well, actually including the Carinade, and surpassing the Carinade as the uh, dual axe depth guard are fantastic at mincing weaker infantry like ours, at least at the current time. Anyway, as usual, we're going to assimilate those captives, and let's see what we got out of it. I mean, a great hoard of treasure, maybe so gets another riddle. We've got a treasure map found. Oh, yeah, yeah, sure. And there we go, another 8,000 gold. At least we're getting plenty of cash. Alrighty, well done, Nessie. Nessie, you're going to move up to Capelli here. And, oh, what the heck is that? Oh, did you look at that? Huh. The... Well, that, I take it, is something due to the mod. <laughs> uh, the, the hotfix plus the mods. Hmm. I think it only occurs when units move. Okay, well, not a big deal. Uh, we're going to want a couple of fell bats here, and I think we can raise a fell bat here as well. And... You know what? I did say we'd be raising a all-undead army, so... Let's begin on that. Ooh, that's expensive, but we do have the cash for it, so why not? Madeline Vole. All right. Costly, but it'll be worth it so we can separate our armies. Now, uh, Billy Butler, you are not yet able to move on in. Uh, we are able to upgrade Sart. And which we're gonna do, and the Fardo, we're going to go for the salt pans rather than the money thing, because this is a construction cost reduction, and we're gonna need it for Sartosa itself. And we'll get the money thing and Befardo after, though I do imagine we'll probably need walls there as well. Hmm, depending on how angry everything to the north of us gets and uh, starts attacking us, or how soon it does. Uh, Plane of Lucini will upgrade Al Dente as well. And. Avizano, all right, so what I wanted to see with you is, if we trade it to you... Yeah, we could just get a... You know what, I'm gonna try this. We're gonna go Defensive Alliance with Monte Costello. Is this a great idea? I'm not sure. What we can do is betray them if needed, but this territory doesn't belong to a full territory, and I'd rather move up this way for now. If these guys get destroyed, it will take their territory anyway. If they can hold, and then they can hold off anything over on this side, hopefully. Plus, by virtue of us having a defensive ally, and we can hopefully sort of prevent other nearby factions from destroying us. I don't know if this is a mistake or not, but one of the new, one of the fun things about these new campaign maps, or well, these, uh, about a new campaign map, a new mod like this, is to learn to make mistakes and see what works as you go. It just seems like the thing to do right now, and we'll see if it works out. Anyway, uh, unassigned skill points we are saving. Outpost available, we're not wasting money on at the current time, especially since we're down to 504 per turn, and it's going to get worse before it gets better. And the turn... And we'll head to Capelli next. And I might want to take the... Dire Doggos, or not Dire Doggos, the Scurvy Doggos out of Aranessa's army for this. If Madeline can reach Aranessa, we'll swap them out. And, oh, where are you going? 
Mm. And what do we have here? Hold the banner of militia. Reload time reduction plus 20% in ammunition. Ooh, well, that's real nice. Recruit 30 units. Working on it, game. Working on it. And while we're at it, let's double check our treasure maps. What do we have here? Okay, so this one's at Lucini. This one's fairly close. So this one's really far. Probably not going to bother with you. Uh, Albion is possible. Hmm... Okay, this one's way too far. Itzel, and this one's close enough. All right, so we'll keep these for now, but we'll see. Gotta keep you. moving through them as some are just basically unreachable as far as we're concerned. And Billy Butler, move on in. Yeah, it looks like the... Uh, for some reason, the town names are gonna freak out every time we move anybody. And ooh, loyalty is dropping. Okay, we need to be careful with that. You are going to need another zombie pirate gunnery mob, like so. All right, now you got two. We'll have to... Oh, 53. We'll have to be careful with the cash. We'll move you into March Stance right beside Capelli. Like... Well, actually, right here. I'd rather trade the Felbats to Aranessa because I'd rather not have the dogs in her army anymore. They're just a liability. All right, and then Nessie, go for this place. Is anybody at war with you? No. I was thinking we could join the war with somebody, but alas, that's not going to happen right now. Attack. Oh, actually. Gunnery White. Uh, get powder wet to get a little bit more missile strength on everybody. No lucky spyglass yet, but not to worry. We'll have it before long. Now you can attack. Nope. Now you can switch to parlay stance. For the additional post-battle loot. And now you can attack. Alright, away we go. A fool's action. We'll see about that, sir. And close victory. And really, we're gonna get damage doing this. Oh, yeah, no. Hmm, I guess it is our first fight against, uh... Imperials. It'll get rid of our two of our Sartosa free companies. And I don't really care about the scurvy dogs. I mean, I guess we can fight it. Yeah, let's fight it real quick. We'll see. If it's too easy, then the next one like this I'll probably cut out. But since this, we haven't fought uh, regular Imperials yet, I think it's worth our time. Away we go. All right, and hey, that's what I say at the start of battles. Damn it, Aranessa, how dare you steal my line. Anyway, away we go once again. We've got a decent little enemy stack. Not decent against uh, two of our stacks, of course. Or our stack and a half. A little bit more than that, I should say. And the stack and three quarters. But we're just going to go ahead and not use the second army and only use Aranesses to keep this a little bit fairer and a little bit more interesting. Not that pirates are known to fight fair, mind you, but in the name of a fun little battle. Anyway, looks like the enemy mortar is targeting our Sartosan militia and they're going to take quite a bit of damage from every volley. Looks like this one lost about a quarter of its HP from a single hit by those shells. It looks like these shells, however, will hit our crabby boys and thus will be completely wasted. We've also got our two units of scurvy dogs hanging around in the uh, in the woods. They've managed to get around the enemy army or moved to a flank where the enemy mortar is unprotected and they should be able to quickly knock it out and either die or book it on out of there and before they do. Alrighty, fighting in the dark slash the shadows there, only the balefire glow of the scurvy dogs. Gotta be a scary sight. Mortar is down, or at the very least shattered, and we're gonna get the scurvy is out of there while the rest of our army moves on in. We've taken position up on top of this hill with our Sartosa militia. We're gonna get the other hand gunner units up here to make use of the elevation, while the uh, deck gunners will be down here and firing upon, well, pretty much anything they can reach. And the biggest threat still left on the field, other than, well, all the enemy units, is this own enemy unit of hand gunners. The enemy have their own, is what I I'm getting at, so we'll be trying to get after those as fast as we can. A locking down an enemy unit. Ooh, I whiffed on that one and meant to hit the great swords with the spearfishers in that Aranessa, but oh well. Pop that. Uh... Oh, that wasn't too bad. Uh, pop that uh, fireball there from the ruby ring of ruin. Somebody suggested that I actually, uh, I actually make use of it because I pretty much never bothered back before the uh, the patch. 
and which changed the, with the uh, magic missiles and homing abilities. And that, at least, that one at least worked well. We'll see about how it continues to work in the future. Anyway, looking pretty okay for us. We've taken a little bit of damage on some of our Sartosa militia, but I think these were the ones that got hit by the mortar as we moved forward, so that is hardly surprising. Aranessa, together with the rotting Prometheans, are holding off one, two, three, four units of enemy melee, and that will hopefully allow our Sartosa militia to essentially move around them and start hitting them from various sides. We also have to knock out these crossbows as fast as we can, as the crossbows will make quick work of our uh, of our own various range units, and thus we will charge our regular Sartosan militia at them. Sartosan infantry, Sartosan free companies. All right, away we go, and get engaged with those crossbows. Unfortunately, the scurvy dogs are so weak that they will actually die in a melee if they try to fight a unit of crossbows. So really, our only recourse is to actually charge them directly. Anyway, it looks like the deck gunners are reaping a fearsome toll amongst the enemy infantry, especially while they're blobbed up as they are. Our hand gunners are trying to take a position up on the hill, and it looks like we've managed to force the enemy greatswords to rout. Now, the enemies are, well, if not given quite as good as they get, are managing to get a few of our units hurt. One of our Sartosa militia is booking it on out of there. But we have managed to force pretty much the entire enemy army to be engaged, and thus we have all the range superiority in they have up. Gonna get a decent angle with regards to the lighting there. For some reason, depending on which angle your camera faces, the map can get really, really dark. Anyway, it looks like these swordsmen and the spears that remain are being overrun by the crabs and the... Uh, piles of Sartosans, a nice volley from the zombie pirate gun deckhands, mob or gunnery mob? Nope, gunnery mob bombers hits the biggest blob of enemies that remains, and while the enemy lord is still alive, the balance of power at about 90%. We'll soon make sure and that the battle is ours. Gotta love those volleys from those bombers. They've gotten three volleys out and 16k damage from three volleys in the entire battle. If you can get them into position, considering their range is quite short, uh, they can very easily clean up in these early battles and are a very decent unit to use in the early game. We just really need to take to artillery and ideally to Sirens, Morngulls, and Rotting Prometheans, as the combination of those units will make sure that it'll be a lot easier to deal with any battle. Anyway, another decisive victory for us, no problem, and the second army not used at all all as it was here attempting to reinforce. All right, turned out to be a pretty nice little fight, especially as we did not wait for the reinforcements, which did, in my opinion, make at least some sense, but also I was too lazy to do so. Uh, at least at the until the point that we acquire some uh, decent range superiority, or at least artillery of our own, we're going to have to rely on bum rush tactics, as the enemy will out artillery us until we do. And though, we should be able to get those up and running fairly quickly. Uh, what we do also want to get up and running is the ability to recruit to zombie powered gunnery mobs with bombs and with handguns. Uh, what we really want to do is get the munitions hut and the rusty pistol trove. Alright, let's get both of them up and running immediately. You gained a little bit of loyalty on that, not too bad, and while we're at it, let's move here and let's trade off scurvy dogs for bats. And if you lose those dogs, well, and then you lose those dogs. Gunnery White, Petey. Uh, okay, we'll need one more point until we can get that lucky spyglass. Let's get ammo sacks for the ammunition for everybody. And I believe we're ready to end the turn. Yes, Sartosa not going to upgrade the growth buildings because it's not worth 1,000 gold. We we'll also need to send somebody out to sea pretty much as soon as we physically can. And building upgrades, outposts ignored, unassigned skill points, saving on Arenas until rank 9, which is in two more, so we're nearly there. End turn.
All right, now the question is where their main stack is. I'm sure that they have one since they are not at war with anybody. And, huh, look at that. The uh, the names of the towns disappear during the end turn. Hmm. Why would the uh, why would the hotfix have done this? Kind of curious. Oh, they're back. Well, at the end of the day, this isn't the worst uh, uh, the worst thing in the world in terms of bugs. All right, so how do we want to do this? Where could their main army be? It could be moving towards us. So uh, since we can see Mintopwa, it must be at Lucini. As soon as we attacked Capelli, it probably moved out. Could be moving here, could be moving here directly towards us. Straight line like that. All right, you know what? Madeline, move a little bit this way. Ah, there it is. I knew it. I knew it. All right. Well, they had to be somewhere, right? Uh, the question is, can we attack them? And the answer is yes, sort of. And oh, Aranessa. Uh, could have built the uh, pirate growth thing in your thing. Okay, that's fine. Uh, ooh. All right, this one is a full stack. I guess the question will be, will they fight us? Uh, move you into March Dance right beside. I also wonder if they have artillery on them. Well, I guess we'll come back for a Mintapua. And, okay, they're building another little army, but that shouldn't be an issue. I uh, can't see what's in there. Billy Butler, you are going to move into, I guess, Madeline's army for now. I'm not risking putting you into Aranessa's because she can't really... Yeah, she doesn't really have the extra movement right now. I really want to see what's in here. If it has, like, four artillery pieces, it's going to be a big problem. Let's also upgrade the haunted hovels here and ignore this. All right, well, I guess we're risking it. Too bad that Parlay Stance won't reach ya, eh? Well, uh, I just realized they might run, but... Well, if they run, they run. Why not? Let's see what they got. Ooh, they do have artillery. And lots and lots of basic troops. Ah, but they will not run. Pyrrhic victory, tons and tons of infantry. Alright, well... Uh, this one will be worth fighting, I think. We'll have to prioritize destroying the enemy artillery as usual, but then afterwards we should be able to deal with their piles of infantry, even if they are superior to ours in a straight-up melee. A little bit more heavily armored, plus shielded, but they don't have the ranged fire. Weapon strength is even. I think we'll be okay. And we have lower leadership as well, but anyway, away we go. All right, always getting some uh, nice, uh, not color schemes, but lighting in these uh, battles lately, which I'm reasonably happy with, as we can actually see oh, what the heck is going on. Anyway, looks like we have a battle, an actual battle before us, a full stack with an art. What the heck is this formation? Uh, the enemy has a couple of artillery pieces and tons and tons of melee units, especially considering the melee units are superior to ours. We will have to use both of our armies so we're gonna wait we also got to remember that our army is kind of badly damaged with three quarters of HP and closer to half HP on a few of those Sartosan militia units so how are we going to do this first of all we have our units of zombie pirate gunnery mobs with handguns and deck gunners who are gonna take position up on this hill and fire down into the enemy army our second army with the piles of the dead the zombies will approach from the flank while Aranessa, together with the uh, uh, Sartosans, will head directly for the enemy. We've looped the bats and the scurvy dogs around to try to hit those artillery pieces, but it looks like they've exposed themselves enough for two of our units of, of fell bats to take care of them first. We're also going to head in our Morngull Haunter, Mr. Billy Butler, who will be going after the enemy general and generally annoying the enemy as best he can. These guys are really, really strong and with 50% and physical resistance and, uh, and their general abilities like their ravenous hunger they really shouldn't have too much trouble anyway the bats are in and the artillery are out as the enemy will not and be able to survive this that bat got stuck there for a second and hopefully our bats will survive getting 
not quite surrounded, but certainly getting damaged by some of the enemy regular units of swordsmen. Aranus is moving on in, and the Krabby Boys once again lead the Sartosans, charge forward firing as they go with those pistols, and we've got the deck gunners firing away at this unit of enemy outriders. Luckily, those are just the regular outriders and not the... Uh, the grenade launcher variety, as that would be a lot scarier in this particular situation. There we go. Rip those Outriders apart. Certainly don't want them to add their armor-piercing damage to the fray. And a few of the Sartosans are going to move in to try to support the Krabby Boys, lest they take too much damage. Uh, the crabs being the tip of the spear this entire time, we do have to be careful about them taking too much damage as we are quite reliant on them at the current time. And Billy Butler is enjoying himself by the looks of it and getting a few nice noms for himself. There we go. Lovely animations on those Morngo Haunters. Can't wait to get a few Morngos, whether it be in this army or another one. Yeah, I got a lot of uh, a lot of army plans already. It should, we should have some um, decent variety in this particular campaign. I definitely want to try to make either a half undead, half ogre army, as in half undead ogre, as in animated hulks, and a half regular ogre army, or if we can get an ogre ally, intersperse some regular ogre units in there as well. Uh, just a very ogre army. And uh, then the obviously mortal army, mixed armies, fully undead armies of various types. There's a lot of stuff I gotta try out. Also gotta think of where I want to put in some of those Berserker units, those Norsken Raiders, which are Berserker-like. There you go, Billy. Get yourself forward. I think he's already killed the enemy lord. I doubt he's that badly damaged the enemy lord. They do work as lord hunters quite well, but they are also good at ripping infantry apart and just annoying everybody near them. So I'm really quite happy with Morngo Hunters. Anyway, our reinforcements have not yet arrived, but it looks like the enemy army is being enveloped. We've managed to allow our two units of melee free company to trap one, two, three, four, five, six, seven units in the center here and they're getting absolutely ripped apart and by our deck gunners and our handguns on the uh, hills that they're firing from oh looks like a few of their shots will be lost to the trees there unfortunately but hopefully not a huge deal now oh, and it looks like unfortunately one of our fell bets has taken too much damage there actually well it's beginning to crumble away maybe it'll uh, and maybe it'll survive maybe it won't but we won't find out until in a few seconds <laughs> as the battle is ours it looks like we didn't need the extra units of the uh, zombies that were just about to join the fray after all billy butler did a fantastic job getting 13k damage and 60 kills so not only damaging a unit and killing the lord but generally annoying the enemy and we found a great position for our deck gunners and our handguns both of which did pretty well in terms of damage one of the deck gunners racking up near 200 kills Kills. Considering they're essentially our artillery unit, it was, uh, well, it was really quite necessary. Anyway, we got a lot of units to chase, but I will do this off screen as it's gonna take a while. Lovely. Alrighty, not bad. It took a little bit too long for our allies, our reinforcing army, to actually reach combat, but unsurprising considering these zombies are very slow. One of our units of Felbats did unfortunately melt away, not really due to damage, but due to crumbling. And uh, it's one of those unfortunate things that still hasn't been fixed, and I'm disappointed that SFO hasn't fixed it as well. Uh, simply because SFO doesn't allow you to use healing spells 
heals after the battle is over, but crumbling still continues. If you can't use healing, nor should your undead units crumble away after the battle outcome is decided. Otherwise, you essentially have to choose between keeping your unit alive or undead or existing uh, and chasing the enemy down. And oftentimes you do need to chase. Anyway, uh, we are going to once again assimilate captives simply because we don't have enough healing in this army. We will not be able to chase you, sir. But we probably won't need to anyway. Uh, Madeline Vole has a plus 18% weapon strength thing. It's not bad. A new treasure map found as well. And we do have to remember that there is one at Lucini. But we won't move there right now because we are in our own territory and thus we can continue to heal like this. Uh, you can't go into raiding, unfortunately. Just stay near Nessie. And we can't raise a new bat. Oh, okay. Well, then you're going to trade your bat to Nessie. And then, oh, really? <laughs> By trading her bat, she moved out of the, uh, she moved out of this location. Oh, wow. Well. What do you do? Income from post-battle loot? Uh, that's great. Who increases our casualty or punishment rate? Oh, is it vampire fleet captains? I would assume that it is then. Hmm. Because it's the only other one that we have. Uh, where are you, vampire fleet captain? No, we can't see here. Yeah, replenish troops. Okay, so yeah, we definitely need a vampire fleet captain. A, to help out the undead troops and B, to uh, replenish the army a little bit more. What do we have here? Did I pick the wrong ally? Did you guys lose your... They lost their army. <laughs> well, if they get destroyed, they get destroyed. We just got to be careful about uh, this guy moving around and attacking us. Hmm. Okay, well, that gambit looks like it did not pay off, but, uh, well, we can send one of the other armies around to deal with it after. All right. Uh, anything else we need to do this turn? I don't believe so, which means skip unassigned skill points, upgrades available end turn. We'll do the skill points next turn. And let's see about Lucini. And then back around to whatever this location was. Mintopwa. Alright, Pavazano still appears to be owned by Monte Castello. My crew. For how long yeah, remains to be seen. Uh, join war against Stigno. No, we're not going to join war against. Frankly, if the Yorks destroy it, it wouldn't be too problematic for us either. Ah, salvage cruise is ready to go. Upkeep production for Zom or for bloated corpses. This doesn't actually do anything helpful for us. But. Let's see. And this does allow us to get a few useful things. First of all, and most importantly, we need probably supernatural regeneration. I was going to say what we wanted was the raise dead cost. I assume the first mate is not in this one. Oh, ship's carpenter is what we need as well. Yeah, that's a pretty darn significant reduction. All right, but I think we'll go for supernatural regeneration first. Then probably Ship's Carpenter. Uh, let's see. We have a limited amount of infamy, after all. And probably efficient necromancy as well. And then start researching command crews right after that. And then, of course, the special pirate lords that we can get. Uh, what the heck? You ran here. Fascinating. Why did you do this? Huh. Is he going beside this faction in the thought that this faction will join the fight? Curious. Or does he want to try to retake Capelli? It's a possibility as well. Hmm. Can we take Lucini with RNS's army only? Uh, without artillery might not be possible. At least not in a single turn. I think we'll need to besiege it. Alright, here's what we'll do. Madeline, I would like you to... Into regular stance. Then I would like you to swap Mr. Billy Butler to Aranessa on one of these in every army. And then I guess Nessie, you can lose. Ah, not the zombie pirate gunnery mobs, they're too useful. That's to lose another one of these handguns, I think. This army will need to be a lot more handgun reliant. Uh, do we have any decent rays dead here? Not really. Anyway, Nessie. Go into regular stance and besiege Lucini. Madeline, we're going to move you to Capelli to defend it. 
All right, Pyrrhic victory here, and we'll give it a turn so that we can actually get up on those walls. Gotta remember that in SFO, the powers of enemy settlements are gonna be a lot scarier. And then in vanilla and harder to deal with. Hey, you? Oh, we can raise a mortar now? You gotta be kidding me. <laughs> I say you gotta be kidding me because I would have put that into Araness's army. If only I had known it was there. But I don't think we should allow you to reclaim Capelli. So we'll have to do with that for a turn or so. We'll join these armies back up after. Well, let's get that one. Uh, let's get the zombie powered deckhands mob as well. I think that's good for now. I don't want to go overboard on this army. What's the likelihood that you could take those? Yeah, and it basically has nothing. All right, fine, fine, fine. You're going to move into Capelli. Aranessa will besiege. I don't think that they can take Al Dente, or at least I doubt it. Or at least I hope they can't. But we shall see. All right, let's double check Diplo. Let's do a few things before we end the turn. All right, nothing Diplo-wise. These guys want to peace out, but I don't think we're going to do that. At least not at the current time. Treasure maps. Oh, right. Uh, are you able to... Ah, you're not able to dig for treasure in, in the same stance. Yeah, that's fine. And where is this? Still fairly far, but reasonably close. We're going to keep that one around. we got to remember, we are sending armies to sea, after all, because we got... Uh, uh, Madeline, I'd like you to get Invocation of Nehek and Root Marcher, but obviously we want to max out Invocation as fast as possible. Nessie, you need one more level. Lucky Spyglass for a Gunnery White in that 10% range increase. And let's get the Killing Cold for Mr. Butler here. And all the other good stuff after. All right. You yeah, really gotta love the uh, Morngill Haunters. They're a very good hero. And I believe we're good to go. So skip outpost available because... Well, we're not going to build that because, frankly, you're probably going to die. If the orcs can manage. And let's end the turn. You're building your siege equipment. Yes, yes. Just had to double check. And you can't raise mortars here now. That would have solved the tower problem, but alas. All right, where are you going to go? Don't they have another army here to go out to see? What the heck? They just disappeared. Curious. And did this army then stay here? Ah, because if this army stayed Everybody here, that means... Oh, no, you're moving now. Uh, Peace Treaty 3,000 gold. I love the 3,000 gold, but no one... Oh! You're going to attack us. Are you crazy? Are you absolutely crazy? Uh, we can do this manually, I think, real quick. I don't see this being problematic in any way. As it was manually. I mean, it's still a fight, and we'll still probably take some damage here, especially as they have a mortar and such, but we're in decent shape. And, more importantly, once we take this settlement, we should be able to build the artillery thing here. Which will be just great. Uh, we got the reinforcements coming in on this side of the map. We actually want them to move further onto the map so that we can chase them down. While Aranessa, the Haunter, and these things. Group one, go kill the enemy. Uh, we'll charge these Sartosans at you as well. Uh, not all the Sartosans, mind you. All right, you guys go back here. I want to set this up so that we're far enough away from the mortar that we can't get attacked. U2 bats, and then U3. Range units back here as well. Together with the gunnery, white going to be group two. Probably group three, actually. I lied. And the rest of this is fine. Star battle. Aaron also go hunt down these guys. And the U2 go melee. Bats help out with this. And we'll have the bats attack the mortar after. The enemy army should start moving towards us. I think I'm a little bit too close, actually. Uh, let's move you back here. Move you back here. You're the main line. So let's make your group four. All right, the rest of this looks good, and Morningville Haunter, did you get hit by something? I think it's some effect on him, because he wouldn't have gotten hit by a spell, because the enemy has no spells, the General of the Empire. If a General of the Empire was casting spells, that would be a cause for concern for the Imperials. Anyway, Nessie Charge, Haunter Charge, you guys get ready to distract, but bats, baddies, get ready to hit him in the back. Alright, there we go. Morngill Haunter is in. Let's reduce the enemy's defenses with the Spearfisher's net, and... Away we go. Alright, bats. 
right into those pikes. Alright, we can watch the rest of this. May not be a fully cinematic battle, but a pseudo-cinematic, especially with this glorious lighting. Alright, Sartosa Militia working together with those crabby boys and the baddies should have absolutely no trouble in dealing with the... Ah, 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 don't let him escape. Oh, wait, reinforcement. Uh, don't let him escape. And, oh, wow, those swordsmen wrecked much quicker than I was expecting. Alright, the Haunter can chase him down because the Haunter has the Chilling War, or whatever it was called, that uh, reduces the enemy's running speed by 40%, just for speed, in general speed. <laughs> Alright, a few more hits from Billy Butler. And you two can... Well, I'll just keep on chasing until these guys are dead, as in fully dead. Though sadly not risen again because no such mechanic exists. Hopefully yet. Maybe it will someday. All right, uh, you can move out. Bats, we're going to have you hit those mortars. And let's allow the enemy to move in close. We'll keep it at max speed until we get into combat. All right, Aranessa, get ready to move with your main group. Go after the... Mm, eh, go after the main enemy swordsman unit. I guess we'll send the Sartosan Free Company forward as well. The Sartosan Militia. And let's take position with all of you guys up here to fire down on the enemy, and then you guys can reinforce with a few more slightly damaged units. For the mortars, you go, baddies. Let's speed it back up to max. And let's see what we got. You want to strike those crossbows for me? Thanks. All right, what are the mortars firing at right now? They're firing at the Sartosan Free Company. Let's back off so we don't get hit by the flying mortar shells. Back into it now. And you guys just distract. Oh, I should have moved you again. Didn't see the second shell. All right, mortars are firing again, and now they've switched their fire to the rotting Prometheans, which we are not concerned by whatsoever. All right, you guys, move on in. You can handle those enemies here. All right, bats have found the enemy mortars, so they will fire no longer and are thus no longer a threat. Darren, us stay back. Let's allow the enemy to get around this little impassable terrain bit here while everybody else moves on in. Yeah, free company indeed, sir. Free company indeed. All right, you guys loop around. Let's try to destroy the enemy range to reduce their capacity to actually damage us. Because most of it will have been from the range. As in, I'm not concerned about their melee doing too much. Let's have the gunnery white and the deck gunners obliterate this poor unit of uh, crossbows with those explosive shots of theirs. Lovely to see as always. Looks like the bats have taken care of the enemy mortars who are shattered, and this unit is running as well. One of our units of Sartosa Free Company are damaged. Let's actually send the militia in to help them out into melee rather than using their ranged attacks. And we'll send the bats after the uh, crossbows after you. Eh. Don't go into melee yet. Stay in range. All right, do we need the bombers? You know what? I think the bombers are a liability right now, so I think no. Uh, we'll give chase to all of you. And Oh, they're firing at the bats now. Mm. All right, you know what? You go after the bats. Oh, wait, you go after the bats. You are the bats. Uh, you know what I mean. <laughs> all right, you guys all move in. Looks good to me, looks good to me. You are moving in as well, and the battle should be quite over quite soon. Uh, Alright, bats. I don't know why they keep going into this column formation. They, I can't remember when they did this. I think it was with game three that everything started moving in these weird column formations constantly. Always been quite the annoyance. Not a big deal, mind you. Minor annoyance, but an annoyance nonetheless. All right, bombers. Nah, nah, still stay away. You guys do need to move into melee now. I can move into melee. You can pop a fireball right, let's say, there. So that works out. Ooh, I actually don't like that. It probably is not going to work so well. You know what? Don't do it. I don't trust it. Reduce the defenses of this unit. And deck gunners. No, 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 no. Stop firing. You're killing our bats. <laughs> a bats are run. You're going to crumble away. And, oh, they're actually having trouble against the... Uh, the enemy crossbows here, because this one was not being attacked by the deck gunners. All right, I lied, deck gunners. You still have work to do. One might say, you're on deck. All righty, and moving to melee. Have you guys done chasing? The more we destroy, the less likely... Not hey, 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 don't go back into combat. The more we destroy, the less likely we'll have to deal with the enemy in an auto-resolve here. There you guys, switch fire, and keep on chasing. 
I love the Sartosa Militia for being able to chase well with their fire while moving. All right, you guys chase over here. You guys chase over here. Bats, please get off the field. I think the bats are dead. And they got too wrecked by the melee of those crossbows. Hey. There you go. 33, come on, you can do it, baddies. And oh, it looks like they survived. Lovely. All right, speed it up to max. Dead gunners here no longer needed. Uh, let's send the Morngill Haunter after these crossbows. Let's do the same with you. All right. Just a matter of chasing everybody down now. No, no, no. Turn off fire at will, please. <laughs> oh, a little bit of a panic moment. Can't have those guys firing at will. All right, looks like the Morngill Haunter caught the crossbows. Nessie doing work. And it looks like we're good, which means Lucini will fall. It looks like a couple of their units will probably have escaped, but not enough for us to be concerned with. Minus the auto-resolve still possibly, nay, probably killing off our poor bats. And the rest of you are probably not going to catch up to here, but that's fine. And hopefully Nessa's now at level 9, because as soon as she gets to level 9, her army will become much stronger. And we won't have to be as concerned. All right, come on, kill off the rest of these crossbows. We need to get them down below, I don't know, six units, maybe? All right, there we go. Good enough. Unit won't survive now. Well, let's hope everybody in the garrison was destroyed. Let's see, 70, 39, ooh, 31 units remain. Could potentially be a unit that was still alive. <laughs> Which will mean we won't be able to take them out this turn. As in, we'll have to waste Aranessa's turn to do it. But on the other hand, at this rate, we won't need the Mortar. I think one of the good things about the Auto-Resolve severely underestimating our forces... Ah, this damn crossbow unit. Uh, severely underestimating our forces is the fact that uh, the AI is much more willing to fight Nessa's army despite the fact that we are liable to win. And aha, Wood Elf Conflict. Oh, looks like the game wants us to attack a Kieran here. Two malevolent treemen and an ancient treeman and great forest eagles. No, we're not fighting that right now. <laughs> that seems like a bad idea. We could probably do it with the two armies, but I'm not sure that it's quite necessary. Ah, we got the constant casualty or punishment rate up now, which is great. Our infamous is at 1006, so we are still able to get the ship's carpenter and get that construction cost reduction. More importantly, uh... Yeah, we still need to level two. Okay, we're getting there, we're getting there. In fact, let's build the mortar munitions hut right now. We could always delete it later. I know it's 2,000 gold, but it's, uh, well, it's necessary. And Nessie, you are so close to rank nine. Let's get rank nine right now by taking Lucini. Occupied. And a Tormentor Sword, a very nice pickup as well. I'm now not sure whether you should have a Brass Cleaver or a Tormentor Sword. Hard to say. You... Madeline, go destroy this little army. It's gonna run. We should be destroying it. Please don't tell me you... Please tell me you can still catch it. I can still catch it good. Alright, and I'll resolve you. I'm like, so... Damn, that killed off a lot of our zombies. Ugh. Oh. oh, game. I see there's gonna be a lot of this. I'm... G Ooh. I think we're gonna have to share the loot here. Yeah, share the loot. It's not a lot of loyalty, but... I like the loyalty of this particular army fixed. Uh, whose territory are you currently in? Hmm. We could try to raid here, but then this army will get destroyed if it fails. Which means probably not. Get back to Capelli, I think. We can't raid um, in Topua anyway. All right. Otherwise, we're looking okay. Ship's Carpenter up next, so I think we won't build this until we can reduce it. Although, at a thousand gold. Yeah, well, we'll wait for the officer's cabin instead. It's fine. In fact, we'll upgrade Lucini to tier 2 immediately. Let's start collecting income here. Not much, mind you, but a little bit. Let's, more importantly, get four melee attack for Sartosan units. Uh, charge bonus for Sartosan units and recruit ranks. Uh, melee defense plus eight for Sartosan units and campaign bonus movement range. And I don't really care about the income from raiding. At least not on Aranessa. The legendary army will probably never raid. At least it's unlikely. Income from enemy. This is this doesn't feel like a point worth taking. I think we will take Lucky Charm. 
And a monkey jar. Oh, wait, actually, no. Maybe we keep saving until we reach rank 12 so we can get the good stuff here. Yeah, all right, that's fine. And we'll t leave out Forger and the rest, and then we'll take uh, rank 12 and get even more good stuff. There we go. How are our Sartosans looking? They just got a lot stronger, now up to 47, 41. And with veterancy, they'll climb even higher. Nice. Alrighty, let's see what else we got to do, though we sadly are running out of time this episode. Befardo, let's upgrade the Dead Pirates Hamlet here in Plains of Lucini, you're okay. Uh, you sadly can't switch to regular stance. I would have liked to get a couple bats recruited because we can't summon them. But at the same time, we're still okay. Uh, huh. Well, you know what? If the orcs kill this guy, then we'll have our second undead army start going after the orcs. That'll, that, that'll make sense. Uh, upgrade available and assign skill points. Outpost available. End your turn. And to Mentopwa we go. I'd have to wonder whether it's safe to leave this little uh, wood elf uh, faction behind us like this. It may not be, I will readily admit. But at the same time, I'm kind of disinclined to I'm use up the resources off. needed to it's actually destroy that uh, pile of enemies. Uh... South Confederacy, Southern Realms, you want to trade with us? E sure, we can always betray you later. Counter offer, also give us money. Nice. Oh, the Peg Street Pawn Shop is finished, which means we are now getting a lot of income from trade. Plus 849. Is that the only faction that we can trade with? No. We can trade with Monte Castello. And we can also trade with Remos, but I don't think we yes. will because we're going to push up here and take all of that stuff. We could do a temporary trade with Monte Costello. I'm thinking they're likely to die. So let's milk them for all the money we can get, essentially. And we can still trade with Remos, but we'd need to betray them anyway, so I don't see any real reason to do it. Anyway, Ship's Carpenter has been acquired, which is very nice for Nessie. Uh, jellyfish in a jar, poison attacks and stuff, which we need to get to maintain control of three provinces. Okay, we'll take a look at that once we actually get it. But for now, Ship's Carpenter. Uh, Luxstone, no. We have a second armor fortune, which I guess we can give to our second lord, Madeline. She could probably take Mentopa herself. What's in what's in what's in here? It shall be done. Uh, maybe. I'd like to see whether we can raise another mortar here Where somewhere. Sadly, no. You could raise nearly a full army here though. Hmm. I'm just wondering whether we can avoid sending Nessa here all together. If you're in March Dance, are you able to you can just reinforce. Yeah, at least this way we won't waste a turn. Alright, let's do that. I want to give the Nessa the mortar from the main army, or from this army anyway, because she needs some kind of artillery piece. Though I suppose in three turns we could just build one here. Alright, and you do a quick little auto resolve right here. Oh, you can't reach with parley? Shame. Crying shame. Attack this. And the faction will be destroyed. Yes, and you gotta be kidding me. <laughs> Uh huh. It looks like the Sartosa Free Company might also be liabilities, in the sense that they always seem to be dying to auto resolves. Huh. Yeah. Alrighty. Well, I think that particular little fight is not worth our time, and besides, we're out of time. So I think I'll just fight this manually real quick in between the episodes, and then next time. As I'm going to call it here, we will split the armies, one to move this way and fight the orcs, unless they lost their army. No, they still have it. Well, if they're able to destroy this faction, we'll send them here. While Aranessa moves up north to start dealing with Varezzo. Varezzo? They've only got two territories, so it shouldn't be too problematic. We will need a military hub up here, but I don't think it's going to be Lucini. We do have two ports in this territory, and it'll probably be a money-making territory for us, so I don't see the need to waste it on military stuff. Anyway, calling it here next time, well, more stuff. Ooh. We'll be able to build more rotting Prometheans soon. In fact, we should probably start working on that thing right now. I just realized that we hit unlock tier 3, so... We get more stuff available. More good stuff. 
You know what, I'll hold off of the munitions set here, but I'm gonna build the desolate shoal slash mangrove of monsters. Possibly another Morngull Haunter, Rotting Prometheans, regular Mor Morngulls and Sirens. Lots and lots of great units for us that'll make a lot, it make it a lot easier for the rest of the, uh, for the rest of the fights. Anyway, I'm getting distracted again. I'm calling it here next time. More fights, more pirates as we move up north and try to uh, link up with the Skaven of Clan Squire. So stay tuned for more. Don't forget to leave a like and comment, especially to Threshold, if you want to see longer episodes. All glory to the algorithm. And thanks for watching.